Can you or shall? Why am I asking this question at this point in time? It's because they're going to have a rerun, of course. When? I don't know. All it matters is that a viewer of mine commented asking for a video on this. So I made it. That's it. Simple as that. And I also find it interesting because I then realized that even though Ganyu's DPS is better than Xiao. There you go. I said it. Ganyu is still the top queen DPS in Genshin up to date. However, it's not to say that nobody lacks Xiao. In fact, many have been saving up for Xiao and prefer him. So today I want to make a video talking about the two characters for those of you who are on the fence to make a better decision especially when you lack both characters tough decision i know unless you're an rng god that gets character on their first pool we'll be looking into the pros and cons of both characters and then i'll provide you my own perspective on whoever you should go for depending on the current state of your genshin account also if you're new to the channel and love genshin impact be sure to subscribe to my channel for more of my super genshin impact content and with that let's jump into the video. First, we have our queen Ganyu. She's the second best waifu in Genshin Impact after Kuching, of course. Joking, that's my personal opinion. As you've known, she's a cryo bow character that specializes in charging shots and is the only bow character at this point in time that fully deals damage off of charge shots. Her charge has two level in which on the second level creates an extra bloom that deals AoE cryo damage with enhanced crit due to her passive talent. Her E skills creates a lotus that draws in mobs to take damage for her and it will explode when either the duration ends or when taking a certain amount of damage. Her burst is one of the best at cryo applying in the game with her creating an ice field, making ice particle fall down onto mobs while boosting her cryo damage within the circle. Now you may have heard that Ganyu is currently the best character in the game and there's a reason for that not just based on because many pupils like her as a character. So the reasons being her level 2 charge attack deals an insane amount of damage. It first hit your opponent dealing the first hit damage and afterward there's a bloom AOE damage that gets crit rate bonus and deal a much higher number than the first hit. And since the level 2 shot blooms deals AOE, this makes Ganyu being able to hit mobs very easily without needing to always aim correctly unlike all other bow characters apart from your media charge shots as well, all their charge shots are single targeted. Not only that, her burst also deals a ton of damage while boosting her cryo damage even more making Ganju's damage go insane during her burst. That's not the only thing with her burst, Ganju's burst is also very good at applying cryo, therefore helping your team with melt reaction. In other words, aside from being a top tier DPS, she's also capable of being a support for your team as well. Not something that most characters can do, which is the reason why she's always so high in the tier list. Now, Ganju's requirements will be that she'll need a shield character to support her because she's very easily interrupted. Her charge attack takes approximately a second to charge to the maximum level. However, if she gets attacked during that time, she'll most likely get knocked back and you miss out your damage without the charge shot. She does have her E skills that grabs the mob's attention. However, it doesn't always work, especially on large enemies, which is why, in order to play her well, characters like Zhongli and Diona should be to support. Other than that, she's one of the easiest characters to play. You just charge your bow, shoot, and kills the enemies. With the exception of you having to train yourself not to miss the arrows, that is. And so with that, here are Ganyu's pros and cons. Her pros, she's cute. She can kill enemies from miles away. She's currently the best DPS that can and will carry you on all battles, especially the Abyss. She's been out for a year and even though the Abyss changes every single patch, she's always one of the few characters that have the most use. Good with cryo application through burst, her charge shots can hit easier due to level 2 bloom. She's the best teamy bird hunter and she's already on top tier even on C0 so you don't really need too much investment on Ganyu. For her cons we have a few but it's mostly toward playstyle. She only uses charge attack therefore to some players it feels repetitive and boring. She requires shield character on your team because she's easily interrupted. The difference in damage dealt between constellations for Ganyu is really insane, especially at C6. However, it's up to you to invest in her or not, either way.
way C0 Ganyu is already a freaking beast. And then we have Xiao. He's a poem character that I had to admit is one of the most fun to play character in the game to date. Because everything about this demon conqueror is just very unique. His attack animation looks very cool and feels very fast paced. Which makes you feel very good when attacking the enemies. His charge attack deals an upward strike that can potentially knock small mobs into the air immobilizing them for a bit. And this is also different because he's one of the few poem characters that have the charge attack not diving you forwards like other poem characters. Not only that, his E skills is one of the sickest in the game. He does what I just called a super dash, driving very fast through your enemies and he's capable of doing it twice at C0 which is feels awesome. So not only his normal attack feels rather fast, he has his E skill to boot which just makes the battle feels very fast paced. And that's not all. Most people pull Shao because of his burst. His burst is literally one of the most insane in terms of playstyle across all characters at this point in time because it literally turns him into a different character. When his burst is activated, as you may have known, he turned all his attack into Animo and now he has access to high jump and do plunging attack which deals AoE damage from all the spike coming up from the ground. It just feels really good from playing him. That's his playstyle which I spent a lot of time talking about just now. Now for his DPS, if you haven't already known, Xiao is considered to be one of Li Wei's top 3 which includes Ganyu, Hu Tao and Xiao. However, Ganyu DPS as we've known is slightly higher, which means you know what, Xiao is an insane character. Now with that being said, he does have issues here and there, mainly because of his burst. Xiao can be very dependent on his burst at time, because that's where he deals most of his damage. Therefore, the amount of uptime that Xiao has for burst directly affects his DPS. Not only that, his burst also decreases his health over time and would go down all the way to zero which kills him. So as a main DPS which already usually don't have a lot of HP, he actually can be quite a frail character. Without a proper healer on your team, he's most likely going to die in battle at some point, especially in the abyss. So team investment for Xiao is very required, having a shield and a healer for him is the most viable way to go. With that, let's have a look at his pros and cons. Pros, he's a very fun to play character from all the fast paced action animation that's going on. He puts on his Yaksha mask during burst which which looks very cool. Burst changes his playstyle to plunging attack which feels really good and deals a ton of damage in AoE helping you to clear battle that has many small mobs. Apart from dealing with Animo mobs directly, Animo character can basically deal very good damage on any enemies without worrying too much on their resistance. Thus, they have the ability to break shield across elements is really good. Xiao is very good at C0, you do not need to invest in any constellation for him. As for his cons, his burst decreased his HP and can kill him by himself. He's dependent on good healer and shield user on your team and his DPS really relies on burst damage so many of the time his playstyle is focused on dealing plunging attack from his burst. So we've gone through the pros and cons of both characters now I want to go through the reason why you would want to choose each character to hopefully help you make a better decision on which character to choose. And so you go for Gan Yu when you love waifus, you lack bow characters. You enjoy her pure charge shot playstyle. You're lacking a DPS character, especially cryo element that can carry you through all the battles, especially the abyss. And you go for Xiao when you're collecting Husbando's characters. You don't like aiming for bow characters like Gan Yu. You like Xiao's fast paced animation playstyle and burst plunging focus. You can put up with his frailness from the constant HP loss and you love animo characters. So this is going to be a tough decision for those of you who want both characters especially when you can't get both at the same time. If they do happen to have double reruns in one patch as Xiao and Gan Yu are both DPS characters. If you're still having trouble choosing after all this I would tell you to go for the characters you feel like you love their playstyle the most because it's not really about DPS. The difference between Gan Yu and Xiao's DPS aren't that great of a difference. So if you happen to really enjoy playing Xiao with all his attacks animation, E skill spams and burst gameplay then go for him. Same goes for Yu if you love killing enemies from afar, constant charging your bow, shooting them in the skies and making them explode like firework then go for her. Spend a bit of time in testing out the two characters and make your decision based on that is what I would tell you to do.
and hopefully that would have helped you to be clearer on your decision. If you're saving for either of the characters, I hope that they will return soon so you can start pooling for them. Now, if you're interested in team building, you can check out some of my best video on team building for Etos and Eula right here. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of my Super Genshin Impact content. And also, I stream on Twitch mostly on Wednesday and Sunday. So if you're interested, be sure to follow me on Twitch and come hang out with that. This is Tom, wishing everyone a super day.